Let's say I have a sprained ankle. I go to take a walk. The sprain has not been treated in any way. What happens? Well, the predictable thing happens. A pile of paint shoots up my leg to my brain. Ow! I don't like that. That is an unpleasant sensation, an unpleasant experience. I don't want to have such experiences. Um, what evaluation, what value would we place on pain? Okay, it's a bad feeling, but it's ultimately good for you because it's allowing your strained leg ligament to heal itself um, without being interfered with or with less interference, I suppose. Your uh, body has to get to work fixing that ligament. Any further use of that ligament for a while is going to interfere in that. So you step, you put your weight on that leg and the pile of pain blasts you and says, don't do that. Okay, that's, you know, sort of the Pavlovian way that the central nervous system works. Um, ultimately, we can say that the pain is bad because you really don't want to experience that pain, but it's necessary. I won't say that it's necessarily good, but it is necessary uh, because it allows the body to prioritize certain things. How badly do you need to put your weight on that leg? You're sitting in your house, your house catches fire. <laughs> um, you tend to have the capacity at moments like that to override the pain in your tendon. Um, you're still going to feel it, but you're going to be able to prioritize that kind of pain. You're going to say, Heh, I really don't feel like being burned alive because that's even more unpleasant than the pain in my ankle, so I'm going to run, regardless. You're going to get punished for that afterwards, as it were, but um, your uh, you're not going to feel it in the same way as you would as if you were just taking a nice tiptoe through the tulips. Um, it's just that's the way pain works. I don't think I'm saying anything more than a bunch of platitudes here. Now, <clears throat> guilt, if you ask me, kind of works in the same way. Um, I um, decide that... Uh, I'm going to do something immoral. I'm going to walk up and uh, insult that little old lady that's walking up the street. Or I'm going to... She has a... I just saw her drop her wallet into her purse. I'm going to take that from her because I want the money. Now, let's just say that the circumstances are such that I know that I'm not going to get caught for whatever reason. I, I can't do that to a poor little old lady like that. That, that That's just not done. Um... You know, I, I don't know. It just seems to be a crime, a sin to do something like that. Little old ladies are to be helped across the street. Little old ladies are to be given your seat when they get on the bus. That's how you approach little old ladies. Um, you don't snatch their purses and run, perhaps shoving them down onto the pavement as you do so. Um, that's crime. That's a guilt. You know, that's a guilt-inducing uh, situation. Okay, um, I have not actually done anything yet, but there's something of an equation taking place, some kind of a balancing act where do it or not do it are being sort of weighed on the scales of my mind. Uh, one side says, go do it, it's desire, and the other side, it's guilt, um, which is, you know, the just the inner feeling that that's a wrong thing to do. I don't want to to deal with the guilt of doing that. If I go and snatch her purse and perhaps do a minor act of violence towards her and run off, I'll think, that was awful of me. I feel awful. I really want to fix this. I want to atone for this action. So, you know, what would I do afterwards? I would go back and I'd give her her purse back and apologize. You know, I think a lot of people would say, look, I, that really kind of doesn't make up for it. you got to do something positive now to atone for this negative, etc. Or, if I don't do anything at all, it, I might end up, say, I don't know, deliberately doing something unpleasant, like just having thoughts that go over and over in my head forever uh, about, I shouldn't have done that, and it's going to nag at me forever. <clears throat> Long after the little old lady has gotten over 
the overt nastiness of the uh, the attack. Well, maybe. Maybe she wouldn't ever get over it. Who knows? But that's kind of not the point. Uh, in neither case, uh, I would say that the pain of the twisted ankle is necessary. The pain of the conscience, the tweak of conscience is necessary. Uh, the pangs of guilt. But they're both deliberately unpleasant experiences. Assuming that there's any deliberateness about this at all, that's another matter. Uh, assuming that your body is actually consciously or somehow autonomically or whatever saying, oh, this is what's happening and I'll shoot the pain back up to the brain to let the brain know to, you know, lay off and stop walking. Um, that's, I'm not really trying to make the case that there's anything like that. There's any intent behind the workings of our central nervous system or our body in general. I'm just saying that if we look at it in a certain way, the pain serves a useful purpose. But the ultimate experience of the pain is bad. Now, um, we have the same case of pain at doing something, you know, that we're going to feel guilty about. Um, I don't want to go and snatch that lady's purse because I know what's going to happen afterwards. Um, if my conscience uh, does not intervene, I might do it, but I know in advance that my conscience is going to intervene. It's the same thing as if I'm laying there with my ankle propped up on a stool and I go, ah, I'm going to go jog around the block. Oh, wait a minute, can't do that. Twisted ankle, aha, okay, good. I look at the little old lady and I weigh the, up the options in my mind um, and I sort of think, okay, no, can't do that because I know what's going to happen. Uh, the guilt is going to inflict an extremely unpleasant experience upon me. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to um, I don't want to engage in that kind of activity because the on a cost benefit analysis on the scales it's not worth it. It d my action does not uh, merit the end result. It's something that I may want to do, but the consequences of not doing it are uh, outweighing at my present assessment of the situation any benefits. What is the little old lady going to have in her purse that I want badly enough to have me assaulting her on my conscience? Probably not much. Probably it, it's definitely not worth it w at all. Um, even as I make this thought experiment, it's kind of interesting, the little bits of guilt that I feel, but even considering this as a, as a thought, assaulting a little old lady, you don't do things like that. Now, the ultimate experience of guilt is unpleasant. It is a negative experience. It is an experience I do not want to have. Uh, like the pain in the ankle, there are varying degrees of it something involving a particularly sensitive part of the body and uh, white hot iron is not the same thing as, I don't know, um, a swat on the side of the head with somebody's hand. Um, they're not quite the same thing. Now, the guilt at, I don't know, um, shoplifting is not the same thing as the guilt at committing serial rape. Um, it's not on the same level, I suppose. It's not the same degree. But at the end of the day, um, it's just a variation on the same thing. It's a, the, the only difference between the two is degree. White hot iron sensitive flesh versus slap on the side of the head. Um, massive, crushing, Kafkaesque guilt uh, versus... A uh, mild sort of sense that I did something I shouldn't have done, and I'm not really bothering to do anything about it to make amends afterwards. Um, not really sort of, you can't really compare them, but in some ways you can because it's just more of the same thing. An unpleasant experience is an unpleasant experience. Um, necessary, perhaps, yes. Which is why I say I'm not advocating that we do away with uh, all the normal sanctions that we have as a society. 
I'm not saying that we do away with, um, as I say, ad nauseum, prisons, judges, guns, handcuffs, uh, cops, all that kind of thing. I don't see how, you know, things being the way they are, we can do without them. Uh, you know, maybe it would be nice, maybe it wouldn't, I don't know. But it seems to me that they're, for the foreseeable future, they're going to be necessary. They are not good things. Don't tell me when you walk past a prison and you look in that that's a good thing. It's not. <laughs> it's a terrible thing. It might be a necessary thing. It might be a reformatory where we try and fix people so that they don't do bad things anymore, or it might simply be a garbage dump. But as things stand now, we need that monstrosity. But it's still a monstrosity. Um, we might uh, like to think that as a society we could eventually do away with these things, but as it is right now, I can't see how we would do without them. Sometimes, when a little boy behaves badly, we have to give him a lecture. Maybe wagging our finger at him a little bit. A deeply unpleasant thing. Every little boy, I'm sure, gets that done to him at some point. Where he feels this, oh, this nice person, my mother, presumably, who normally is the source of all kinds of very nice things, affection, um, nice, nice things to eat, security, protection, um, love, all this kind of thing. I've created a rift between us. I have somehow done something that has had a negative impact upon this person, and I don't want to feel this way. I don't understand what's happening to me, but that wagging finger and the look on her face and the tone of her voice really is having an effect on me, and I don't like this one little bit. So I'm going to listen to what she says, and she's got my attention. I'm going to try and find out how I can avoid this. Pavlov again. <clears throat> so, um, that's, you know, guilt. That's And I'm not saying that people shouldn't do this. You know, you've got to correct your children. We've got to learn how to function in this world. Um, or children in general have to be corrected, or people have to be restrained from conducting themselves in a way that's damaging to other people. Um, that's, you know, guilt has a useful function in our society. But you can't tell me that the experience of guilt is a good thing. <laughs> um, it's not. Uh, it's, it's a bad thing, and that's precisely why we use it. We use it in the same way as, you know, say you would in the bad old days, I guess, the way I was raised, which didn't really, doesn't really seem all that bad in hindsight. You get swatted across the head, but, you know, it's now we sort of said that's bad, so we'll go on the guilt. We'll lay the guilt on instead of uh, instead of actually swatting the kid. If you ask me, they're you know it's just the same thing uh, ultimately. Uh, physical discipline versus mental discipline is the same thing, or emotional discipline, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's just um, doing something that is a sort of reward for bad behavior. Um, you're telling somebody don't do this because it's the right thing to do, do this or behave this way because if you don't, something bad will happen. Uh, you'll get uh, ten of the best with the paddle, or you'll get one of these, uh, and equally these are bad things, or these are experiences you do not want to have. Interesting, uh, interestingly, it has been my experience that the act of inflicting pain is one of those things that gives you a sense of empowerment, uh, real power. It's not just an, it's not enough to simply have people doing what you want them to do. Uh, you have to have the ability to punish them for not doing it. That's power. Um, you have the you have to have the ability to feel like you're you're making them do it against their will. That's the important thing about power. It's not enough to just be obeyed. You have to be able to make people do things against their will. Guilt works the same way. 
some people might love the feeling of power that comes, the, the feeling that comes with having power over people, the power to coerce people and make them do things against their will. It's the same, if you ask me, the same power trip uh, inflicting deliberate guilt on people. It's the same feeling of power, of the ability to subvert the wills of other people to make people do things against their will to say yes you want to do this but I'm stopping you from doing it because of the spell quote unquote that I've cast over you using this thing called guilt instead of using pain over physical pain I've gotten up in here and that's control <clears throat> now in both cases, as I say, they may be necessary, but they're not good, and they can be horrifically abused. Now, the reason why I harp on this is I don't see how either one, guilt or physical pain, can make you into a good person. Um, that I don't think is possible. I don't think, except for teaching by pure example, <laughs> um, can you... Um, intervene to make somebody else a good person. Um, I can, uh, my example, using the little old lady in her purse of a good person, is I see a little old lady walking along with her purse that I've just seen her drop her wallet into, and I can now get away with stealing from her, but the thought of doing so, while it might occur to me, I have sort of so arranged my own inner life that I don't even want to do that. I have controlled any sort of desire from the get-go for anything that she may have. There is no pull between myself and anything that she has, either physically or in terms of her will, that I wish to possess. That, if you ask me, is what a good person would do. A good person doesn't have to have the inner struggle. Uh, a good person doesn't have to think about the possibility of prisons. A good person has controlled the push-pull or uh, aversion versus desire mechanism inside their mind and the question of attempting to acquire what the other person has, either physically or emotionally, doesn't even arise. <laughs> I think this one might take a few more videos. Thanks.